fish. There you go. Wait at the boat. What's up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Well, we've got the sun trying to peek out over here. We're supposed to have a semi-clear day and then by the end of the day, the clouds are gonna roll back in and the wind's gonna pick up a little bit. So Josh, my trusted buddy right behind me here, we're out on a jump boat on a brand new pond. Uh, we have uh, been exploring for about 15 minutes, haven't got a bite on. Uh, it was pretty much an adventure right over in that corner trying to get the boat <laughs> out into the water. Uh, we got a jump boat. Normally people get kayaks out in here, mainly because of how shallow it is is uh, but we are able to scooch and use the oar and kind of buzz the trolling motor behind and get ourselves out here but um, allegedly there is a four pound crappie out here I think the guy that told me the story was full of crappie but uh, we're gonna work around we got some jigs we got some worms hanging off the back over here we got some curly tails I am gonna throw lipless crankbait and some uh, chatter baits out here maybe even throw some plastics out here to see what kind of fish are in this pond right here I'm curious because uh, we travel this past this place a million times never see any kind of pressure on it so I'm assuming we'd have a good day today if uh, those fish don't have a lot of problems uh, with uh, 18,000 fishermen all over it but uh, give uh, Josh and I uh, a nice little uh, cross of the fingers here we're gonna cast out hopefully get a tug on the line and we get to show some good-looking fish up in front of you today while we're floating around here one of the main things we're seeing is it's super clear the water I'm literally looking down at the bottom that's about maybe I don't know two or three feet worth of depth right here but uh, out in this open area here, you can see a couple stumps right here, but right below, there's like a whole stump field, like literally right just beneath the water. They look like old cypress trees that are underneath here. And uh, Josh has uh, snagged up a couple times. There's one right behind us to our left-hand side here. It's on the uh, stern side. But I guess I gotta be like uh, up in a crow's nest here, like the Titanic and looking out for uh, these uh, tree birds <laughs> out here. But I think the game plan right now is probably to work the shoreline, but uh, I can't believe how crystal clear this water is. One thing that's weird about Delaware, um, Josh will probably embellish a little bit, is the further south you go down, I guess more pines you see, and as well, even further south down when you see more cypress coming around. There's, I think, multiple ponds that have cypress all around uh, the whole pond and actually in the waters themselves. I think Trap Pond is a good example, right? Uh, is uh, one you want to go to where you can see these big old stumps. I mean, they're, they're, they're telltale. Even if they fall down and you don't see the rest of the tree because they break because of storms or whatever, you know just by looking at the stump that it's an actual cypress tree. You on? Yeah, got fish on. Oh, fish on. Josh is on. What does he got? I'm on the beetle spin. Nice. First cast on the beetle spin. Uh, okay. I thought it came off for a second. What do we got here, buddy? Ooh. Largy. It's a bass. There you go. <laughs> you know that? No, uh, it's, it's there. In no, front it's a chain pickerel, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is a pickerel. <laughs> That's a nice sized snot rocket. Wow. All right. We're not skunked. That is a good looking sized chain pickle right there, folks. Oh, it's on my side. That's why. <laughs> Yo, first cast on the beetle spin. The chain pickerel. Nice. Good job, Josh. Not scum. All right, with no bladed baits work. <laughs> I was right out in the middle, man. Out of nowhere. I mean, there's probably a stumps and whatnot out there. Good job, bud. Thank you. Yeah, I went with the uh, beetle spin, the bladed bait, just thinking it might snag a little less. You know, it's got that arm like a spinner bait, and it'll bounce off the logs a little more. That's my hope, anyway. And uh, seems to, so far, be working. I'm curious if anybody knows the history of Waples or Wapples, whatever way you want to pronounce it. That's the pond we are on today. If they know the history of this pond, maybe this was all land at one time and it just got overfilled. There was a forest here, who knows? But there's a lot, a lot of stumps and trees in here that we're seeing. But we're going ahead and uh, fishing around this body of water. Josh and I, over the past week or so, have been trying to decide uh, what kind of different things we want to do on this channel. If you got some ideas, you know, let us know. Drop a comment below. Uh, Josh might be getting, or I'm, I'm pretty sure he is at some point in time, 
it's already been purchased, he said. Uh, we have one piece that's going to be going on to our larger boat that Josh has. Uh, it's the Bay and Ocean Efficient boat that we use out there. And uh, it's going to be a game changer. We're finally going to get rid of the dropping of the anchor and throwing that line into the wall and everything else like that. So I'm sure you can kind of get an idea what you think is going to be on the boat. But uh, it is definitely going to be uh, helping us a lot because uh, that way that's one less thing we have to worry about. All we have to do is worry about fishing. But uh, we looked over the channel and it seems like the bay and the ocean fishing all of last year seems to be most, the most popular videos you guys like. Uh, we got our audience that likes to watch uh, this stuff right here too, so we're going to keep doing that. We're going to try to keep getting new bodies of water, ponds, and lakes uh, from time to time. But it's just about that time. We got next week. We finally probably going to be out of these 50 degree days. I think this is going to be the last one. It's the last multiple layer day, hopefully, because next week's going to be in the 60s and the 70s. I think we're going to finally break out of this crappy weather. We're not going to get rid of the wind for a little bit, but at least it'll be warm and these fish will be way more active uh, here on all of our local ponds and everything else like that. But uh, hopefully out in the inlet, into the canals and everything else like that, that'll start livening up by probably maybe mid, if not end of uh, April. But uh, we keep an eye on Facebook every day to see what's been caught. Drum season's coming pretty close. We're excited about that. I've already seen some pictures here. We're getting some small drums uh, just below uh, the Maryland line here in Virginia. So that means hopefully they're working their way up here. Coming up. What's coming up? Turkey season. Turkey season if you're a hunter. <laughs> Josh is already excited about that. There's a log right in front of you on the bow, bud. It's sticking right out. But enough of that chatter. Let's get the fish in. Fish. There you go. <laughs> right at the boat. That's a bass. That's a bass. A little net action there, buddy. I just saw him dart up <laughs> right here from the bottom. <laughs> nice. All right. That's on that little jig that I was working. I took the bobber off to get a little further down, and we got this nice little uh, one-pound chunk. <laughs> you don't want to weigh him, Dan? <laughs> Let's weigh him. <laughs> owie, owie. <laughs> All right. Look at the little gut on that guy. Perfect. How about that? Off she goes. So they are down there, Josh. <laughs> he, he just came out right from that log right over there. Not done. All right, we both have fish on. Oh, watch your eye. Snappo. <laughs> and there goes the worm to it. Oh, watch your eye. I think I'm shallow, huh? You on? Yeah, Josh is on. Oh snap, that's it. Looks like a good one, buddy. Bass. Good job, Josh. Where'd you get that on? The beetle? The beetle spin, yeah. Alright. Nah, it's not a big one. It's just I oh, know it's pickerel. Oh, chain pickerel. There you go. Another pickerel. No, oh, he just uh, <laughs> dove as soon as he saw the net. <laughs> That is a really nice chain pickle. That is way bigger than the one he had. <laughs> Get a size of that uh, bugger right there. All right. That's a good one. Come on, buddy. Breaking in our scale for the first time here. Everything's all cleared out, courtesy of my daughter. Thank you for my birthday gift. I was going to get the uh, beetle out of his mouth. And that's a nice one. Uh, yeah, two pounds, maybe. What do we got here, folks? Oh, calm down there, buddy. No, 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 no. It's one thing about these guys, man. They're flopping all around. We got one pound, 1.85 pounds, guys. Good. All right. There you go. 
pound and three quarters. And uh, all she goes. Good job. All of them on the bladed bait, those chain pickerel. I like pickerel. They're they're slimy. They get a bad rap. They uh, chew off a lot of lures. This one did not get my line. But uh, a lot of fun to catch. They put up a good fight. And, you know, that's what it's all about, right? All right, Josh is on. It's funny because he thumped it and then he came back for it. Nice. Is that a bass? Yeah, the bass. All right. Good job. I think you're on, bud. Josh got a bass right there. Nice one, bud. Liking that beetle spin. Did you show that thing off, the beetle spin you were using? Uh, no. Um, a little bass. Boom. And then I'm just fishing a little beetle spin. I mean, it's not officially a beetle spin. You know, I bought these little blades at Walmart and it's just a jig, but... It's working. But, uh, yeah, I mean, generically, that's what's called a beetle spin. Fish on. All right. Little bassy bass. Oh, gut hook. <laughs> catch is a catch. So excited about it. Overshot it. I gotta be careful not to mess with this gill plate here. He's got the hook in there pretty good. There we go. Long career of the year. Off she goes. You're just gonna ride the edge all the way around? Huh? You just ride the edge all the way around? Yeah. You gotta get off this one? Uh, we'll try the bridge. Trolling motor uh, friendly pond here, folks. Now I'm stuck in the bottom. Get you a tree pounder. Into a tree. Right, give me a second. Fish on. on. Fish on. Josh is on. Feels like a good fish. Nice. See that ten yeah. pound crappy. <laughs> All right, where's Josh out here? He's to my left. Yeah, here. What you got there, buddy? The lodgy. Nice. I don't go under. Oh. oh no. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Oh, oh. Yeah, he came off. Quick release. He's still on her. Is he? No, my leg took off. Hanging here. Nice. Got a half pounder there. Good job, Josh. Half pounder. Caught one the same size and he's like, oh yeah, a pound and a half. <laughs> well, it didn't turn out the way we wanted it to turn out, but we did get fish on the end of the line here. Uh, it turned out to be a two pond episode. However, only one appeared in front of you. In the beginning, we had Waples Pond, and at the end, we had Fleetwood, which did not appear on this video whatsoever. So let's start with the second pond that was Fleetwood. We unfortunately did not get any action whatsoever. We fished it for a long time, and uh, Josh was the only one that caught one fish, and that was a Sunny that was on the end of the line on Nightcrawler right before we left for the day. Uh, it was quite windy, and uh, we were having issues getting blown all over the place. But uh, getting back to Waples, uh, that's what we were more curious about is, can you get a John boat on there with a trolling motor? And the answer is yes, but not really. <laughs> it is a kayak friendly pond. I'll say that because it's a very, very shallow pond. It's only one foot at the minimum, four foot at its deepest. And the ramp is very minimalistic and it's very, very shallow. So myself and Josh are about almost 500 pounds worth of dudes. We've got an aluminum boat with a trolling motor on the back of it. So you can just imagine as soon as we get into it, it's going to sink. And it literally took us 20 minutes to do a lot of scooting, 
pushing with the oar and trying to use the uh, uh, propeller from the motor to kind of push us out. We finally got out there and it was pretty neat uh, to see uh, what was going on in that pond. Uh, mainly uh, why it's only a kayak only pond is because when you look down into the water, which is crystal clear, which blew my mind, uh, we do have some crystal clear ponds, but they're again down south, just like this one was. Uh, but there were a lot of logs down there and a whole bunch of stumps. It was a virtual minefield, primarily cypress stumps. So Josh, you know, when the wind was going on, you got the ripples and you can't really see what's going on. He must have hit his trolling motor about four or five times with that prop. And I, I thought it was just going to break off or have to end up rolling back. But that didn't happen. But it was it's just funny to see his face react when it hits. Uh, but we did catch fish there. Uh, when you look down into the pond itself, you didn't see any kind of life going on there. Like, where the heck are all these fish? But it was pretty neat on some of the strikes that we had. When I threw that clobber minnow out into that stump field, I was bouncing around uh, with that, and I came past the stump. You didn't see anything in front of it, but you saw the fish just dart right around it and go right after that bait. So it was pretty neat to see that. And, of course, the same thing happened with Josh's beetle spin when he was catching his chain pickerel. So... Those were really good size chain prickle for that pond because uh, that's a little bit above average what we normally see. It's about a pound, but uh, one was almost two pounds, which is pretty good. So if we ever have kayaks or Josh convinces me to get out on a kayak, we may go back out there again and try our luck and get more fish as those waters warm up. Uh, it still was, and that day was a little bit chilly, but now we have warmer days. Uh, this outro right here is being filmed a week after when we went to that pond. So I'm going to kind of give you an update as to what's happening real quick here. Down at Cape Penlopen State Pier and on the beaches, we have, after many, many years, a gator blitz going on right now. People are catching huge blues. We've got the flounder coming back in. We've got, bl uh, not blues, we've got a uh, drum coming back in here. So things are starting to get exciting. Things are livening up here in Delaware. So we're getting excited and we cannot wait to get out there on the bay and on the ocean. We got a great item that Josh bought and actually installed it on the boat, which is going to change our game plan forever. <laughs> Hopefully as long as it runs and it doesn't break because it happened last year and he had to get it replaced. But uh, it's going to get rid of the anchor. It's going to get rid of the toggle when we throw it into the wall to go for tog and everything else like that. So you can kind of guess what he bought for the boat. And it's going to put more time in front of us to go ahead and fish rather than worry about all that nonsense to get to fishing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you consider, please subscribe to the channel, click in the notification bell, follow us on Instagram at 302 Fish. And of course, on the right hand side, there's a great video right there. And follow us on our playlist. I'm hoping you guys have a great day and I hope to get to see you on the next episode.